Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hong Bong Park, Versus Value, Head of Korea. It's a shame that we can't gather together in Busan for Money Money today, but hopefully we can do this forum in person next year. May I thank Money Money for organizing this fantastic event. In this presentation, I am going to give you an analysis of container ship sector, what has been happening and what the future may hold covering demand, earnings and values. Especially, I will focus on large container ships above post Panamax as this market is very hot nowadays and is also crucial for Korean shipping industry. Before I start, I must reference our usual disclaimer. And then I would like to give a brief introduction of Bessie's value. We are leading provider of valuation and market intelligence in the maritime sector. Through our website, reports and consultancy, we provide values, data, vessel tracking and trade flow analytics. We work with around 400 annual subscribers, including major lenders, investors, owners, professional services, and governments from all around the world. We currently have around 160 staff, and I am very delighted to expand the Vessels Value Korean office thanks to great support from our clients. Here is some quick pictures of our diverse and inclusive team. Enough for that, let's kick off the container analysis starting with values. This graph shows container earnings for each ship type for the last six years. As you can see, the current rates are the highest for all ship types during this time span, illustrating how container ship sector is bullish now. If we zoom into last two years, the chart rate for all container ship types had fallen quite significantly from the beginning of this year because of COVID-19 reaching the bottom in June this year. Since then, earnings have increased a lot and are much higher than pre-COVID-19 level. This chart looks at value changes for five-year-old vessels in the major container ship types since 2016. Very similarly with the trend in chart rates, values over the last year are generally up with Panamax's performing the best, showing 29% year-on-year increase in values. When we look at last three months, we can see massive gains from the bottom of the market in June this year. Most significantly, highly volatile Panamax sector had an almost unbelievable 96% increase in value over that time period. Now, moving on to the analysis of where the values of container ships are in relation to long-term shipping cycle. This chart indicates where current values are compared to its historical median. It's really a tale of two stories. The larger types are looking a bit overpriced in comparison to long-term median, while the smaller types are still cheap, implying there may be limited downside in the value. The last slide we will look at with values is our fundamental driven forecast, we produce in partnership with forecasting specialist VMR of Norway. This chart shows the forecasted values by quarter through 2024. Small decline is expected next year, followed by 16 to 30 percent increase in values expected by mid 2024. Now, moving on to demand and supply analysis, which is key element determining the market. I will spend more time on demand side as having limited time. And I want to take a minute to explain how we measure the demand. Shipping demand can be represented by cargo miles 
which is cargo volumes multiplied by cargo distances. We calculated at each individual vessel activity level effectively through using AIS, GIS, and behavioral algorithm to determine what each vessel is doing when she stops. Using the ever laden as an example, you can see lots of her stoppages here. And our algorithm estimate of what she was doing when stopped in the second and the column called the stoppage type. And this is more details on stoppage information. We then have some other clever algorithm that takes this stoppage information and combine it into laden and balanced journeys as we can see here. Again, this is more detailed information for individual journey. Finally, this information is then aggregated up to drive real time and historical cargo miles for the vessel, fleet, sector, or whatever level of aggregation required. To run the analysis, we then compare changes in cargo mile demand to changes in the fleet size which is equivalent to comparing demand versus supply, a very important metric in measuring the health and prospects of the sector. This graph shows demand and supply for large container ships of all post Panamax. You can see how quickly cargo miles have jumped in the last few months, while the fleet numbers have not increased that much. For easier comparison, I made this year-on-year -year percentage change chart for supply and demand. In the last month, the demand growth, for example, was 3.4%, which is much higher than supply growth at 1.3%. Simply, this chart explains why container earnings and values are currently so high as the demand is currently growing a lot faster than fleet growth. If we just have a look at demand side separately in this chart, the cargo miles of large container ships are higher than pre-COVID-19 levels, which is very positive in this market. Looking at year-on-year -year growth change on demand, where green indicating positive growth and red indicating negative growth, the demand has been very firm in the last couple of months by looking at lots of green points here. This graph is more relevant to supply side, but I would like to show you as another interesting story is here. The average speed of large container ships continuously declined after COVID-19 appeared. However, you can clearly see that it has been massively increasing in the last few months. By looking at these real-time data changes, we could expect the market boom will come. But at the same time, increasing speed can be an issue on supply side as it can cause higher fleet utilization, which will put pressure on supply side. Let's move on further analysis on trade, dividing into east and west. Firstly, container trade from the east. This graph showing daily cargo miles of all post Panama size again from South Korea to global. Obviously, there are fluctuations, particularly the demand hugely dropped earlier of this year because of COVID-19, but the figure increased quickly than we expected reaching higher point than pre-COVID-19 level. China to global trend is very much the same with Korea. There were two significant drops for the first and second peaks of COVID-19 confirmed cases, followed by a very strong recovery. Singapore to global trade also showing very much similar pattern with the two previous slides. Moving on to container ship trade to the West. Global to USA trade also hugely affected by COVID-19, leading to huge drop in cargo miles, but again, it has increased in the last four months, 
even touching 10% higher figure compared to pre-COVID-19 number. Moving on to global to Northwest Europe, the speed and level of recovery are slower than others like from the East, but still the cargo miles maintaining much higher level compared to June this year. To summarize, we are positive on strong demand and vaccine which can accelerate world economy, hence container ship demand. Low bunker prices are also a good factor giving positivity in this market. However, we also advise caution on increasing fleet utilization, particularly ship's speed are rising very quickly. Young age profile of large container ships would be another negative factor in the market as it means there are not many potential ships to be scrapped in the near future. For demand side, second lockdown in some countries would impact global trade in a negative way. This is the end of my presentation. Please feel free to contact me on the details you can see here. Thank you very much.